to do when something is broken. What's yes. our topic, reader? What to do when something is broken. What to do when something is broken. I want to begin by saying, ladies and gentlemen, that I believe that healthy marriages are possible. Please, somebody groan. Say something. Yes, Please Say preacher. it again. <laughs> I say, I believe that healthy marriages are possible. Possible, preacher. That's right. Mm -hmm. In fact, can I rephrase that? Yes. I know that healthy marriages are possible. Yes. Okay, preacher. Now let me say here, it's on the screen. Let me say here, uh, 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 as a Bible preacher, that mar the marriage I am referring to is that of a man and a woman. Yes, preacher. Can I say it again? Yes, sir. I said the marriage I am referring to is that of a man and a woman. And a woman. I say I'm a Bible preacher. Yes. And so I'm not here to talk about the others. Mm -hmm. They are out of line biblically. Come yes, on, somebody sir. talk to me here. Yes. And I want to say up front, this is my father's world. This world doesn't belong to any prime minister, to any governor. Is anybody here? Yes, preacher. This is my father's world. Yeah. He created it. In fact, he made it and created man. Yes. And he created a woman. Yes. And married them before sin. Yes, preacher. So marriage was there before sin. Am I talking to anybody here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are two things I told you before I tell you again. That was before sin. Marriage mm -hmm. and the Sabbath. Yes, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you read the songs of Solomon, you must conclude that the book is the largest repository of biblical teachings. In fact, let me say again, the book is the largest repository of biblical teachings on the subject of romantic love. Yes, preacher. Mm -hmm. Boy, that book is something else. If you know you can't take it, don't read it. Mm -hmm. And the love is erotic. The love is what, reader? Erotic. Erotic because it exists between a man and a woman. And a woman preacher, yes. And so the implication is clear. Yes. Come on, reader, what it says, the what? The mutual physical attraction that a man and a woman feels towards each other is good and ennobling. Oh, reader, you should know that you are married just like I am. Mm. I said a mutual physical attraction that a man and woman feels towards each other is good and what? Ennobling. And what is clear to me is this. The romantic love that is celebrated in the book of Solomon is wedded romantic love. Yes, preacher. Solomon is married to this black beauty and the imagery is symbolic rather than sensory. Yes, sir. Rather than sensory. No matter how you view this piece of literature, the point is clear. It is between a man and a woman. Yes. And the imagery of this poem is powerful. It is more symbolic rather than sensual. Yes, sir. You can read it for yourself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me say here tonight, and I know there are too many broken marriages and by extension, broken families in this world of ours. That's right, preacher. Can I say it again? Yes. There are too many broken marriages and by extension, broken families in this world of ours. Yep. I found this story, I think, on the internet. But Janice grew up with her mom and with her dad in a small town. Everyone in the community thought that Janice's parents had a great marriage. Mm. But she vividly remembers her mother and father arguing. Yes. She vividly remembers her mother and father's arguments. Mm -hmm. Things were especially bad. When her father was drunk, Janice remember hiding. Yes. And trembling in her closet more than once. She was sure her father would hurt her mother. Eventually, her parents separated and divorced. Yes. Too many of us can identify with stories like this. It's Not true, true, preacher. It's true. Too many of us yes. can identify with stories like this. Stories of what, reader? Broken, Broken homes. homes. And yes. what else? Broken marriages. Come on, reader. And what else? Broken relationships. And you gotta hit this one hard. Mm -hmm. What else? Broken children. Broken children. And I told you, I'll tell you again. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. That when a marriage is broken, man, it is, it, is, it is the tearing apart of that which was joined together. And when you tear things, it hurts. Yes, preacher. It hurts. What do you do when something is broken? Mm. Tell us, preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, when you, break, when you break that down, let me say again. When you break that down by the number of marriages, I did some research, found this online. Mm -hmm. 42 to 45 percent parents of first marriages end in divorce. Mm. Let me say again. Yes. 42 to 45 percent of first marriages end in what? Divorce. What's the second one says, Rita? 60 percent of second marriages end in divorce. And you thought with third marriages it would mm -hmm. go lower. But what it says, Rita? It says 73 percent of third marriages end in divorce if i'm to do a summary let me say again if i'm to do a summary we all must agree that marriages are becoming less common yes it's true preacher oh sad but cohabitation yes. mm -hmm. couples living together or as we say couples living home who are not married is becoming increasingly common increasingly preacher yes Single parenting is common and has increased in recent decades across the world. Mm. Mothers are taking care of babies all by themselves. Mm -hmm. Moreover, ladies and gentlemen, there has been a great upward trend in divorce rates globally mm -hmm. since the 1970s. Have mercy, preacher. The question is, how do we fix something? That is broken. Mm. Did you hear me? Yes. Can I say to you again? Look me in the eyes. I'm looking in your eyes. How do we fix something that is broken? broken? What advice does God have for us in this global marriage pandemic? Mm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a friend of mine finally walked out on her husband. She was tired of his excuses and irresponsibility. Mm -hmm. She was finished with his criticisms and harsh remarks. Yes. In her mind, enough was enough. enough. And it was time to end the marriage. Yes. As she described their relationship, the conclusion was this marriage did not need to end in divorce. Mm. There was no unrepentant adultery between either of them. Mm -hmm. No abandonment. Mm -hmm. No repeated cycle of abuse. They were simply struggling with what most marriage deal with today. Yes. yes Miscommunication. Preacher. Yes, preacher. You better say that one. Financial more. disagreement. Man. Yes, preacher. Selfish attitude. Uh -huh. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, here, sir. And differences of opinion. Yes. Yesterday and today. God, please. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 14. Come on, everybody reads what it says here. For I am against the putting away of a wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel. Oh, yes. The contemporary English version says, the Lord God, all powerful of where? Of Israel. And what the verb? Hates. Hits. What is the verb? Hates. Hates anyone who is cruel enough to divorce his wife. Yes. Mm, that's a serious thing, preacher. And read the English Revised Version. Read that what it says. The Lord, the God of Israel says. Yes, please. I hate divorce. And I hate the cruel things that men do. Oh, Lord God, have mercy. What a serious indictment. Have preacher. mercy. And even though permission is given in the New Testament. As to why a spouse can legally and spiritually divorce one another. I am declaring. I am what? Declaring. Come on, preacher. talk to me. I say, I am what? Declaring. I say, I am declaring that, 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 that the God who forgives and forgets still hates divorce. Yes. Yes. Even if you have permission, God hates divorce. Why don't you try to work it out? Why don't you find a counselor? Why don't you sit together? Why don't you take a vacation and go someplace and work it out? Yes. Are you listening to me? Because you get married again and second marriages are higher in divorce and third marriages are even higher. Is yes. anybody listening yes, to the sir. preacher here? Yes, preacher. Now let us go back to creation. Mm -hmm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the role of God changed from a transcendent God 
to a God who is imminent. Yes, preacher. To a God who is what? Imminent. Let me explain that. Transcendent means high and lifted up. Imminent mm -hmm. means that he came down low. Yes. This changed in his creation and relationship with Adam and his bride. Man was created first yes. and God put him in the garden. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. Come on, read what it says here. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And so God made all these things and then he made the man and he put him in the garden to dress it and to, and to keep it. Therefore, my friends, paradise where Adam lives is, is both a place and a way of life. Yes. <laughs> It was his home. The place, in fact, his place to manage. To manage, preacher. He had everything for man's survival. Come on, somebody yes, say preacher. Amen. Go on, preacher. He had food. He had water. Yeah. Everything that he needed for survival. And watch it. All man needed was a companion. A companion, preacher. And he did not know he needed a companion. God had to make him aware. Ah. <laughs> what is clear is this companionship what did I say reader companionship was not to be found by man in creatures mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh Lord let me see again I say companionship was not to be found by man in creatures no way preacher. man could not take a dog or a cat or a ma are you listening to me here yes sir the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 20 come on reader what it says and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air mm. and to every beast of the field yes please but for Adam there was not found and help meet for him mm. and so here we see the exercise of man's powers of discrimination and classification. Yes, preacher. Man is intelligent. Yes. God didn't create Adam as a child. When God made him, he was an adult. Come on, somebody say amen. Yes, sir. The guy had common sense. And so God said to him, I want you to name the animals. Yes. And one scholar says that the name he gave the animals was expressive of their innermost nature. Yes, and sir. so he looked at one and it looked, and he said, lion. Yes, sir. Lion. Mm -hmm. And he saw one that gives milk and he said, cow. Mm -hmm. And he saw one that was just innocent and he said, sheep. Yes. Yes, Richard. And then he saw man's best friend. Woo, 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 and he said, dog. Yes. What is certain is that man is aware of his loneliness as a result of this exercise. Yes, sir. Yes, what? Richard. Come on, Adam, go take a horse. Mm -hmm. Nah? Mm -hmm. It is big and too strong. Big, big and strong, preacher. They're going to trample me. Mm -hmm. I could neither go on top or below. Ha, look up. <laughs> and, and, and more so, it has four feet. Four preacher, yes. Well, take a monkey. He can climb. Oh, no, 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 no. He does not look like me. Ha, no way. He, look, he looks ugly. <laughs> well, take a dog. He's a man. He's man's best friend. No, he barks and is too loud. Yes. Tongue always sticking out, preacher. So Adam is saying, I want something. Who I can cuddle with? Yes. As the cat cuddles. <laughs> well, 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 take the cat. No, 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 no. He has four feet. Yes. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that this was done on the sixth day. On the what? The sixth Come day. Come on, you all talk to me. This was done on which day? The sixth day. The sixth day. And please note as well that woman was created on the sixth day after man was created. Yes. yes. So woman came first and man came second. Mm -hmm. And woman came from the rib of man. Come on, somebody yes, talk sir. to me. Yes, mm, and the account is found in Genesis 2. But note the statement in Genesis 127. Mm -hmm. Notice, I'm getting somewhere. Come on, read the bones here. What it says here? So God created man in his own image. Yes, please. In the image of God created he them. Created he him. Male and female created he them come on read it read it again yes mm. so god created man in his own image yes please in the image of god created he him yes man male, male and, and female created he them and so look at this 
God said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. God said, let there be a firmament. firmament. Mm -hmm. Now the word of command is turned into a word of consultation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let mm -hmm. us make man. Yes, yes. Together, preacher. Why? Because yes. man will be created in our own image. Yes. Let us make man for whose sake the rest of the creatures were made. Yes. Why is male and female mentioned in the verse and woman was not yet created? Mm. Now follow me here. Yes, preacher. Follow me. Help me, Lord, please. Now after man named the animals and came to the realization that he had no mate, God caused a deep sleep to come upon man. Yes, preacher. That's what the Bible says. Yes. A deep sleep, a deep sleep refers to what, what reader? A what? A, a special, special state, state induced by who? The Lord himself. In order to convey an important revelation. Yes, preacher. Mm -hmm. I made you. I could kill you. Yes. I give you life. I could take away the life. That's come on, right. somebody say That's amen. right. That's right. So God gave Adam life on that day. And the same day God take it away. And after God made the woman, God gave him life again. Yes. Hey, what a mighty God we serve. Samsa, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, sing it please. Hey, angels. Hey, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Watch me here, friends. Me, watch me, please. Help me, Lord. Watch me here. All this happened before sin. Before sin, yes. Man and woman were obviously created before sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the next day after their creation was the seventh day that God blessed. Yes, sir. Yes, preacher. Somebody talk. Will somebody yes, talk to me, man? Yes, preacher. Come on, somebody in some church. You all say amen, no man. Amen. Yes. So after the marriage, the Bible does not say if the marriage was consummated. But what is clear is that on the Sabbath, on the next day, they rested because God Himself rested. Yes, preacher. Yes. Yes. I'm not talking on Nancy's story. This is the truth. This is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now with Adam's body lifeless. Notice what God did. Genesis 2.21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God what? And the Lord God mm -hmm. caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Yes please. And he slept. Uh -huh. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And so I told you just now that Adam was created out of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. God stooped down and formed his head and his mm -hmm. ears and his chin. And his mouth and his nose and his eyes and the retina. God, somebody talk to me. Now. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And the neck and the esophagus and the, mm. and the shoulders and the right, chest right, and the right. belly and the yes. back yes. and the fingers and the hands and the elbow and the shoulder. I'm, like I'm going up, but I, I'm supposed to be coming down yes, and, yes, the, and the buttocks yes, yes, and the <laughs> front <laughs> ups and the legs and yes. the knee. Yes, preacher. And the toes. Yeah. And then the Bible says that God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Come on, somebody talk to me, man. I said, man became what? A living soul. A living soul. Yes. Man. Yes, sir. Praise God, man. Yes. Come on, somebody say, man. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me, our great. See again, Adam was created. Adam was created out of the dust of the ground. Yes. And Eve was created from Adam's rib. Yes. I think I told you some, some nights before that, that God uh, bara the sun, moon, and the yes. stars. Yes. Huh? And God asa Adam. But because Eve was not created, she was built, she got bana. Yes. She was made from the rib. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Now follow me here. Now both 
man and woman have the same number of ribs. Yes. Twelve pairs. Twelve pairs, preacher. Breeder, you have twelve pairs. Twelve. Mm -hmm. I have? Twelve. Pairs. Twelve. God took one from Adam. Yes. It does not say he had thirteen. No, no way, preacher. What it says is that God took one. Yes, that's right. How God took it, where he took it from, I don't know. But if God wants to take it, God has the right to take it because God made it. That's right, that's right, preacher. I want you to please note, I said just now, but let me say it again for emphasis sake. He borrowed the sun, the moon, and the stars with a finger. He yes. asked a man from the dust of the ground, but he banned a woman from the man. Yes. And the woman was built from the rib of the man. Yes. And so look what happened after creation. In fact, look what happened after the creation of the woman. Come on, reader. What it says, Adam is what? Adam is given life again, mm. Mm -hmm. excluding the rib that God took out. Oh, come on. What's the second one says? Mm. When he what? When he gets up, uh -huh. he sees one of his kind. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. I could imagine. Yes. The guy was there seeing monkey and crab and yes. dog and sheep. But when he got up, he saw one. Yes. Long hair. Yes, Richard. Nice shoulders. Richard, pretty Richard. face. Yes. She didn't have to put on powder. <laughs> A nice chest. Yes, sir. With some coconuts. Yes. Ay, 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 man. And the shape like a Coca-Cola bottle. Hey, Adam got excited. Yes. And it says here, he called, he is called man. Uh -huh. And he names the creature. In fact, let me say that. He is called man. Yes. And he names the creation of one like him, what? Woman. Woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. Woman. So the Bible says, Genesis 2.22. Come on, read it, please. What it says? <laughs> and the rib... Which the Lord had taken from man. Yes, man. Made he a woman. Ah. And brought her unto the man. No, you read the text wrong. The man went pulling the woman out of the house. No, 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 preacher. That's in your Bible. Uh -huh. The man held on to the woman's hand and said, come. No, preacher. God brought her. Yes. God is the father. Yes. It's like a marriage, my boy. Yes, sir. God brought her. That's right. They were married on that day. Yes. So the next day, which was the seventh hour, which was the Sabbath day, they were husband and wife. Yes, Come preacher. on, somebody say yes. amen. God brought her unto the man, and that is marriage. Yes. Adam shouted, this is now a, com a companion. To make man complete. Yes. Can I say it again? Yes, I say Adam shouted. This is now a companion. To make man complete. Yes. The dog has his bone. Mm -hmm. The cat has his bone. Mm. But I have my bone. Yes. That's right. And what woman had the man didn't have. Mm -hmm. So if you get married. You have to marry to somebody. That has what you don't have. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about feet and hands. Come on somebody say Yes sir. That's Come right. On, somebody preacher. say amen. I ain't criticizing anybody. I ain't talking about anybody. I saying what the Bible says. Come on, somebody That's right, say preacher. amen. That's right. Now, my friends here listening. It is commonly observed that the woman was not made from the superior part of man. Mm -hmm. Oh my mm -hmm. God. Tell us why, preacher. Why? High talk, high talk, Pastor. That she might not be taught. To be above him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have power over him. All right, preacher. Not from any inferior part as being below him. Below him. Come mm -hmm. on, somebody talk to me now. Come on, preacher. Huh? To be trampled on by him. All right, preacher. But out of his side. Yes. yes Come on, preacher. somebody talk to me, no man. Yes. I say, out of his side. God put the rib by his side. Out of his side that she might appear to be equal to him. Equal, preacher. Yes. Side by side, preacher. She's the weaker vessel, boy. Mm -hmm. But she's a joint heir. Joint heir. I That's say right. she's a joint heir. Yes. I like to say it. I am the head, but she's the neck. Uh huh. Take off the neck. What you have? I say, what you have? The Bible says in First Peter chapter three and verse seven. Come on, reader. What it says here? Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Mm. I don't know how to treat them, Joel. Treat them good. Woman was made to be loved, not to be beaten. Mm. A man who beats a woman is a weakling. Yes. 
I heard that from C.D. Brooks, his deceased. He said, a man who beats a woman is a weakling. And if a woman beats a man, she, she has a right. <laughs> Have mercy. Treat them well. Come on, they are special. They think differently. Because they were made differently. And so from this creation narrative, you can now understand why God hates divorce. Mm -hmm. And God hates it because divorce is violent. Violent, preacher. I said it's violent. Yes. I remember going to the courthouse one day and a man got, got through with his divorce and he said to his friend, come, come, let's go and drink something, boy. I got rid of the problem. Come on, give me a break, man. Serious thing, preacher. You got rid of the problem? You might be the problem. Divorce doesn't say you are right and she is wrong or she is right and you are wrong. Everybody has a problem. Yes. Come on, somebody say amen. Yes, sir. That's true. God hates it because divorce is what, reader? It is violent. Violent. Yes. And it is violent because it separates what God has joined together. Yes, yes, preacher. Can something be torn apart without pain or destruction? Mm. Not at all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the question is this Can broken marriages be fixed? Can somebody answer me? Yes, preacher. I say, can broken marriages be fixed? Yes, preacher. Yes. I've fixed many. I remember once a brother called me. I'm not telling you from where. And he said, Pastor, you marry me. I'm ready to leave this woman. I called you to get your advice. Whether to leave or to stay. I said, buddy, you go and pray and I will go and pray. And whatever God tells you, you do. Mm -hmm. Called me back about three days later. He said, I got the message. Uh -huh. God is not in the separation business, man. You got to work it out together. I said, you got to work it out. God will work on you. He's still working on me. You're not perfect to make me what I ought to be. You gotta humble yourself. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and the Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on Help me say, he's still working on me. To make me what I ought to be. <laughs> it took him just a week to make the moon and stars, sun and the earth and the Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working. Come on, I love it. Sing it again. Sing it. He's still working on. Come on, baby, take To make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars. The sun and the earth and the Jupiter and Mars. Hey, how about loving that he must be? He's still working on me. Now, oh, somebody say amen, man. Amen. If you can, won't you give the Lord a round of applause tonight? Amen. I can't hear you, but God hears. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Went on the internet and did some research. I pulled from all about. Five steps to fix a broken marriage. Number one. What's number one, reader? Determine what made you fall in love in the first place. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get back to that place. Yes. Oh, when I saw me. Oh, when I saw her. Let us get back to basics. What was it? What, 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 what was it about your spouse that, that, that made you initially interested? Yes. And there's some people, you know, you know, they fall in love after they get married. Eh? It's true, preacher. The second one says, what it says, reader? Reflect on what has made your marriage feel broken. And so identify the cause of what make your marriage feel broken will help you to more quickly tackle the root of the issue. Yes. What is the problem? Am I helping in the house? Am I helping with the dishes and with the laundry? And number three, reader, what it says here? Practice effective listening skills. Oh, I have mastered that. Mm. Hone the skill of effective listening. Yes. Mm? By showing genuine interest. Yes, preacher. Listen to the woman. Look in the eyes when she's talking. Comment occasionally. Yes. So she, she knows you have interest. One day a man went home and he told his wife, you see, you see, you see, you see, I just heard it on the radio. Mm -hmm. That for every, every 30 words, 
a man says, a, a, woman, a, a woman says it 60 times. She <laughs> yes. says, yes, because every time I talk to you, I have to repeat it. Yes, yes, <laughs> preacher. <laughs> Reading nonverbal messages. Yes. In fact, read nonverbal messages. Knowing she's sad. She don't have to say so. Look in the face, look in his face, and the final one I have here, set aside your own emotional reaction. Man. Yes, yes, preacher. And the fourth one reader, what it says here? Never let distractions hinder your progress. Oh, yes. It is imperative for you. In fact, it is imperative for your success that you and your spouse make time for one another. Yes. And keep the right attitude despite how hectic your life may be. Mm -hmm. You got to learn to sit together sometimes and, and eat together, man, and bathe together and, and laugh together. Yes. Come on, somebody say amen. My wife knows I hate to be tickled. And so she, she comes after me and I run all up and down the house. And when she catches me, I am weak. <laughs> she likes that. Oh, they, they, love that. they love to play. Whether they're 50 or 60, they love to play. Am I speaking the truth? Yes. Can the lady singing here say amen? <laughs> and the fifth one. Find a way to what? To reconnect. Come on, say the thing, man. Find a way to what? Find a way to reconnect. Oh, yes, man. Mm -hmm. Just the two of us. Yes. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Yes. I don't want to sing no secular song here. But just the two of us. Man. Hmm? That's all right. Go someplace. Man. Even if it's in the Grenadines. Even if it's in Karakou. Yes. Even if you have to leave Grenada and go to Trinidad. Come on, go someplace. man. Is anybody listening to me here? Yes. Even if you have to leave St. Croix and go to St. Thomas. Make the thing exciting and interesting. Am I talking to anybody? I'm hearing you preaching. And even after separation, mm -hmm. find ways to reconnect. Let me say again. I say even after separation, finding ways to reconnect yes. is crucial when fixing a marriage. Yes, preacher. No pastor could fix it for you. No marriage counselor can fix it for you. They have ideas. They might help. They can't fix it. You got to fix it for your. Sir. And you got to make up in your mind that you want to fix it. Yes. And if by chance right. you don't want to fix it for yourself, don't forget your children, man. Marriages, in fact, divorces and separation destroy the children. My friends listening today, in fact, my friends listening tonight, healing a broken marriage does not happen in a microwave. No way, preacher. That's not overnight. You know, and most of the time, the fault belongs to the man. Most of the time, I've been around some time, man. I've been in ministry for some 26 years. And if as men we'll humble ourselves, man, and learn to forgive, yes, hmm? most important, you must seek the Lord's guidance and follow His lead. Yes, prayer is your pathway to peace. Yes, preacher. Is anybody, is anybody listening to me? Yes. Can I say it again? Yes, I preacher. say prayer is your pathway to peace. Prayer not only changes her heart, but yours. Yes. You gotta pray. Kneel together. Praise together. Hey, I will praise you, Lord. With every breath that I take, I will praise you, Lord. Each promise I make, hallelujah, hey, when eternity ends and starts over again, even again, I will praise you. Can you help me sing it, girl? Sing it. Oh, I will praise you, Lord, with every breath that I take. friends let God lead man did you hear me yes say let God lead man lead me Lord 
I will fall. Beautiful song. Lead me, Lord. I will go. You have called. Come on, girl, sing it. I will answer. Seven and verse one. Mm -hmm. Except the Lord, yes, build a house. Yes, preacher. Read what it says. It says, "Except the Lord build a house." Read a, read a, come on, read yes. the thing properly. What yes. it says? Except the Lord build the house. Yes, man. Yes, man. Labor, except hold yes, on, man. Yes. Except the Lord. The Lord, preacher. Say, except the Lord. Yes, preacher. Builds the house. Mm -hmm, come on, mm -hmm. go from the top. Mm -hmm. What it says here? Except the Lord. Yes, man. Mm -hmm, build the house. Mm. They labor in vain that building. And the last part says, mm -hmm. except the Lord. Yes, keep preacher. the city. Mm -hmm. The watchman watch it, but in vain, preacher. God is in charge, man. Yes. I say, God is in charge, man. Hold on to his hands, man. Don't let go his hands, man. Put your hand in his hand, man. Let him lead you. Oh, put your hand in the hand of the man who stared the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who comes the sea. And you can look at others differently by putting Put your, your hand in the hand of the man who can the knee. Can I sing a verse? Yeah, the verse. Hear me. Mama taught me how to pray before I reach the age of seven. Seven, seven. And when I'm down on my knees, that's when I'm closest to heaven. Heaven. Daddy lived his life had many words. And trying to tell me what to do But he told me enough in this world To carry me through Hey, I put to your hand In the hand of the man Come on. This is the water Put your hand in the hand of the man Who comes the sea Take a look at yourself And you can By putting your hand in the hand of the man from the Galilee, hey, hey, by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee, by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Sing one more time, hey, by putting your hand in the hand of the man. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And this is the true story. John and I were together for five years. Her story. Before we got married. We had a daughter two years in. And that is when we started arguing. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It was always over the same thing. He wanted us to be non-monogamous. I had seen a ton of open marriages mm -hmm. and I had never seen it done well but he constantly pushed it serious thing I could not imagine the impact and implications separation would have for our families I couldn't fathom how we could continue working together how we made it through we saw a few different counselors one counselor told me to get over it. Mm. Come on, give me a break, man. Get over it. I gave him an ultimatum. Either commit to giving heart and soul to me, or I was done. Mm. He heard that. Finally, I got fed up. 
you want to go, go. If you don't want to commit to me, go. That's what I'm saying. That's not what the story said. Well, there's been a lot of healing. And I'm working on reclaiming my sexuality. For so long, I felt like the, the, the prude to his explorer. <laughs> hey, like the brakes to his accelerator. Now I feel confident and I feel love. The point here is this. Put, put, put it on. Broken marriages can be? Can be mended. Man, man say the thing, yes. man. Broken marriages can be what? Mended. Dark times happen in all relationships. Yes. In pastor's own too. Yes. In priests. Uh, well, yes. in reverence. Is anybody here? Yes. I said dark times happen in all relationships. Yes, preacher. Kids, money wars. Yeah, they're not working. Yes. You're fed up of kissing. Yeah. Mm hmm how do you ignite more intimacy into your marriage? I have four things to you. Mm -hmm. Revisit things you have in common. Yes. You hear that? Re reminisce together. Yes. Go back. Here's the third one. Invest in the what, reader? The interest uh -huh. or activities that excite your spouse. Yeah, man. If he loves to go play cricket, you go watch him. And when he hits the bung, when he hits the ball down the field for four, that's my boy. That's my sweetness there. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Hit it again. Yes. And the fourth one, this is what I love. What's the fourth one? Laugh together. Laugh together. <laughs> well, my friends, successful partners take marriage not a month at a time or a year at a time, but one day at a time. One day at a time, preacher. Don't look after tomorrow. Take care of today. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And don't let the sun go down on your rat, man. Try to fix it, man. Everybody makes mistakes. There's no perfect pastor. There's no perfect husband. Is anybody here? There's no perfect wife. Everybody makes mistakes. But don't let it go. No, don't let after sun, sun down is still there. Because you know what? Uh, you go and you lie down in bed back to back. Mm -hmm. Before the sun set. Fix it up. And then when you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. Hello. I say when you go to sleep, foot on foot, on. hand on hand, on. head on head, wow. and lips vibrating. Come on, somebody talk to me, man. And you got your to question. make your marriage sweet. You got to make your marriage exciting. You got to make your marriage worth it. Come on, somebody say, man. Amen. Mm. I have three questions for you tonight. As we bring this to a close. Number one. Do you believe that biblical marriage is between a man and a woman? If you believe that, just put up both hands. Both hands. Yes, pastor, I believe biblical marriage is between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Number two. Do you believe that broken marriages can be fixed? Oh yes, fold your hands. Make up your face. Mm. 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 Do you believe that God honors a husband and wife who are faithful to each other? Come on, just shake your head and say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, mm -hmm. I want to pray for you tonight. I pray for unity in marriage. I want you to say after me, I got this prayer on the internet. I don't know it in my head, so I have to read it. But I want you to say after me. Say after me, say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. We come before you to thank you for all you have done. We come before you to thank you for all you have done. And continue to do in our lives. And continue to do in our lives. We come before you today. We come before you today. Oh God. Oh God. Asking for a stronger bond of unity in our marriage. Asking for a stronger bond of unity in our marriage. Father, we ask that you will give us the ability father we ask that you will give us the ability to be a united front for you to be a united front for you letting nothing come between us letting nothing come between us help us father help us father to identify to identify and work through anything that is not pleasing to you to work through anything that is not pleasing to you so we can continually reach higher levels of unity so we can continually reach higher levels of unity in our marriage in our marriage
spiritually spiritually physically physically and mentally and mentally we are thankful and excited to see the work of your hand we are thankful and excited to see the work of your hand as we do our best as we do our best to seek your face daily to seek your face daily oh we love you oh we love you and we thank you and we thank you for all these things for all these things in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray amen amen you know i can't leave out the singles not everybody's married and so i have a prayer for the singles mm -hmm. my single people Say after me, say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord, I've come to recognize and accept that my heart's desire. I've come to recognize and accept that my heart's desire is to serve you. Is to serve you. From this day forward. From this day forward. With every part of my being. With every part of my being. To present my body as a living sacrifice. To present my body as a living sacrifice. Unto you for the rest of my life. Unto you for the rest of my life. May I be willing. May I be willing. To go where you lead. To go where you lead. Even when it is not what I expect. Even when it is not what I expected. I say even when it is not what I expect. Even when it is not what I expected. And keep teaching. And keep teaching. And training me. And training me. To live. To live. And to move. And to move. And work. And work. And expend my life. And expend my life. Entirely. Entirely. For your service. For your service. Lord. Lord. May all I say, may all I say, and do, and do, and from this day forward, and from this day forward, be pleasing in your sight, be pleasing in your sight, and may you be glorified through my life, and may you be glorified through my life, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen, 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 Amen. May God bless you. Thank you for saying that prayer. May God help you fix your marriage. And those of you who are married, I pray that God will help you. To find somebody who loves you and find somebody who you love. But even if there's no perfect marriage. But hold on. Stay firm. Because God is good.